Hello friends, this video on electric circuits part 20 is brought to you by examfear.com. No more fear from exam. Please make sure that you have watched all the videos till part 19 before going ahead with part 20. It is clear to you now? Now we will solve some problems based on the Wheatstone bridge and meter bridge. So the first problem here is the four arms of a Wheatstone bridge have the following resistances. That is, first let us name it. This is A, B, C and D. So the four arms have these resistances as you can see in the figure. This is your galvanometer. The galvanometer has a resistance of 15 ohms. Calculate the current through the galvanometer when a potential difference of 10 volt is maintained across AC. So you have to calculate the value of the current which flows through the galvanometer. Right. So first let, let us look at the current distribution. Let us suppose some current I comes out of the battery. This I reaches here. I1 flows on to this side. So I2 comes this side. I1 reaches here. Ig flows this side. So I1 minus Ig will flow across BC. This I2 will come here and Ig from this side will also come here. So I2 plus Ig will flow across this side. They both will join together and again form I. That is I1 plus I2. So it comes back to the battery. So this is my current distribution. Now in this case, as it looks like a um, Wheatstone bridge, first you check whether the bridge is balanced or not. Because if the bridge is balanced, then the deflection on through the galvanometer will be zero. So there will be no current in the galvanometer. But in this case, P by Q is equal to 100 by 10, that is 10. And R by S is 60 by 5, that is 12. So that is P by Q is not equal to here. P by Q is not equal to R by S. So this is an unbalanced bridge. So how will you solve this? So here you will apply your loop law, that is Kirchhoff's loop law. So first you apply it to this first loop that is A, B, D, A. So in the first loop A, B, D, A, let us assume one direction, say this direction. So what is the EMF in this loop? There is no EMF so you can write it as 0. What are the resistances involved? That is 100 ohms, 15 ohms that is the resistance of the galvanometer and 60 ohms. So how much current flows through 100 ohms? That is I1. Current flowing through 15 ohms is Ig. And current through 60 ohms is I2. Now put the signs here. As per my convention, I1 is along my assumed direction. Ig is also along my assumed direction. By I2 is in the opposite direction. So I2 will have a negative sign. The rest, both of them will have positive signs. So from this, we get an equation 20I1 plus 3Ig minus 12I2 is equal to 0. This is my first equation. Now let us apply loop law to BCDB. Now I am solving this problem in the same manner as I solved another previous problem. So here also let me assume this as my direction, my assumed direction. So here what happens here also the net EMF, there is no EMF involved in the circuit so that is e that becomes equal to 0. So what are the resistances involved? Resistances are 10 ohms, 15 ohms and 5 ohms. That is 10 ohms, 15 ohms and 5 ohms. So what is the current flowing through this 10 ohms? It is I1 minus Ig. Current through 15 ohms is Ig. And current through 5 ohms is I2 plus Ig. Now let us look at the signs. This is my assumed direction. I1 minus Ig is in along my assumed direction. But I2 plus Ig is in the opposite direction. And Ig is also in the opposite direction. So these two will have negative signs. But this will have a positive sign. So from this I get the second equation that is 2 I1 minus 6 Ig minus I2 is equal to 0. 
So now let us apply the loop law to A, D, C, E, A. That is A, D, C, E, A. To this loop. Now let us assume my direction as this one. So here what is the net EMF? I mean how many EMFs are there? There is a 10 volt EMF. So we will put it as 10. What are the resistances involved? That is 60 ohms and 5 ohms. How much current flows through 60 ohms? That is I2. How much current flows through 5 ohms? That is I2 plus Ig. Right? Now comparing with my direction, I2 is in my, along my assumed direction. I2 plus Ig is also along my assumed direction. So both of them will have positive signs. So from this, I will get my third equation that is 13 I2 plus Ig is equal to 2 that is equation 3. So now I have three equations and I also have three variables that is I1, I2 and Ig. So how do I solve it? I multiply equation 2 with 10 and that gives me 20 I1 minus 60 Ig minus 10 I2 is equal to 0 and we call this equation as equation 4. So now we subtract equation 4 from equation 1 and that gives 20 I1 plus 3 Ig minus 12 I2 is equal to 0 and this is 20 I1 minus 60 Ig minus 10 I2 is equal to 0. Now I reverse the signs. So what do we get? We get 63 Ig minus 2 I2 is equal to 0. We call this as equation number 5. So now from equation 3 we found that I2 is equal to 2 minus Ig divided by 30. And from equation 5 we find that I2 is equal to 63 Ig divided by 2. Therefore, from these two, we can say that both right hand sides can be equalized. Therefore, 2 minus Ig by 13 is equal to 63 Ig divided by 2. So, Calculating this value, we get Ig is equal to 4.8 milliamperes. So this is the value of the current that will flow through the galvanometer. Right? So now you can see that how much useful Kirchhoff's law is. It, it, it helps us so much to solve complicated circuits. To solve circuits where Wheatstone bridge fails, to, for, uh, to solve circuits where Ohm's law fails. So there comes the Kirchhoff's law. So whenever you have closed loops, Kirchhoff's law is there to help you. Now let us look at the next problem. It says that in a meter bridge, the balance point is found to be at 39.5 cm from the left end A. If an unknown resistor X is in the left gap and a known resistor Y of resistance 12.5 is in the right gap. Determine the resistance of X. So let us remember how the meter bridge looks like. This is how it looks like where R is my known resistance and S is my unknown resistance. Right? And this is my balance point. Right? So in this problem, what, what are the values that are given? It says that the balance point is found to be at 39.5 cm from the left end. So this is the left end. So balance point is found to be 39.5 cm from here. That means L1 is given as 39.5 cm. Right? If an unknown resistor X is in the left gap. So that means here S is equal to X. 
and a known resistor Y of resistance 12.5 ohms is in the right gap. Now, just have a look here. Unknown resistor is in the left gap. So, this is my left gap, right? So, now it says that this R is unknown in this problem. And this S is known according to this problem because the right gap resistor is known here. Here, the resistor which is in the right gap is Y and that is known. So, this is my right gap. So, the right gap resistor is known here. That means S is equal to 12.5 ohms and R is the unknown resistor X. So, we have to calculate the value of this X. So, now since, since we are talking about balance point, what is balance point? Balance point means that when the jockey is at this point, the bridge is balanced, right? So, since we are talking about balance point, therefore, when it is at the balance point, the bridge should be balanced since balance point, therefore, it refers to a balanced bridge, right? So, under this condition, R by S will be equal to L1 divided by 100 minus L1, right? So, what is R here? R is X and S is 12.5. This is equal to L1 is 39.5 divided by 100 minus 39.5. Therefore, your X that is the unknown resistance will come out to be 39.5 divided by 60.5 into 12.5 which comes out to be 8.16 ohms. So this is the value of the unknown resistor, right? So if you remember the construction of the meter bridge, it will be very much easy to solve problems on meter bridge. So whenever you get problems on meter bridge, roughly draw the meter bridge and then try to jot down the points. Let us look at the third problem. It says that Determine the balance point of the previous bridge if X and Y are interchanged. That means you remember the previous, you remember the same bridge. Here it says that X and Y are interchanged. That means now X comes here and Y goes here. So what will happen in that case? It will be somewhat like this. That means now this will be your y and this will be x. So, this is again unknown and this is known, right? So, it says that if it, it is not unknown now, now we know both x and y. So, it just says that if x is here and y is here, where will be the balance point, right? So, that means here we have to calculate the value of L1. Now we don't know what is L1. It says that whatever value you calculated for X in the previous question, let us suppose that it is the value of X. But now we say that X is not here. Instead X is here and Y is here. So for balance point, the condition that should be true is that R by S should be equal to L1 divided by 100 minus L1. So, R is Y, X is, S is X, this is L1 divided by 100 minus L1. Now, what is Y? The value of Y was, if you look at the previous question, it was 12.5. And what was X? X we calculated as 8.16. So, this is equal to L1 divided by 100 minus L1. So, from this we find that L1 is equal to 60.5 centimeters. Therefore, the balance point is 60.5 centimeters away from left end A. So, it is this much distance away from this end A. Right? Thank you. Please visit examfear.com to watch free educational videos, try free online tests, get the best quality study materials, study from the best tutors and mentors and much more. Thank you once again.